This video is an introduction to yet another project I'm about to start up on and uh, for anyone that uh, doesn't recognize this this is a PDP 11-3 these were quite an interesting machine um, in the earlier PDP units such as the PDP 8 that I showed in a previous video those machines were almost entirely discrete in their design in that the processor was made up from discrete components, um, sort of TTL devices, that sort of thing. And so the entire architecture for the PDP-8 was based around a discrete processor design. Now the PDP-11-3 and a few variants of this are kind of the halfway house, a stepping stone between the totally discrete designs that we had in the PDP-8 and the single chip uh, processor systems that came later. So what the designers of this machine did is they took the discrete architecture and they distilled it into just a few uh, large-scale devices. So the general layout is fairly similar in terms of the way they were physically constructed, just a lot more compact We've got a similar type of backplane, uh, albeit uh, a lot narrower. And um, these machines were uh, fairly well used in industry. This particular machine came out of a, a CNC machine, so it's part of a CNC controller. Um, but um, it's been sent to me for repair. I haven't gone too far into it yet, uh, I only started working on this yesterday. And uh, when I first got it, it wouldn't boot up. Now that wasn't part of the problem that um, it was sent to me for. I think that's just uh, some things that uh, occurred during shipping. There's a few bad joints that were probably down to uh, vibration or moisture during shipping. A few failed capacitors, probably just power cycling. Um, but it wouldn't boot up and uh, I didn't video that. Um, but if that's the sort of thing you want to uh, see in these videos, then please let me know. Um, but I spent a few hours just getting it to the point where it would uh, apparently boot up. But the main problem with this is it won't read the encoders in the CNC machine. And so this um, series of videos will be about trying to get this working properly. And um, first thing I want to do in this video is just to show you it booting up. If you've seen these booting then you probably want to skip the rest of this video, it'll be fairly boring. Um, but if you haven't seen these machines then I'll just give a very brief introduction to um, how this particular machine uh, is going to be accessed. Now of course it's normally part of a, uh, a bigger system, There's normally, it's normally plugged into um, a computer rack and uh, with display and, and various uh, other hardware attached but this is the only piece I've got. I don't even have the power supply for it so boot up sequence won't be right for these supplies and so it almost certainly won't set the program counter correctly but that doesn't really matter we can do that remotely uh, we've got it hooked up through an RS-232 uh, port to a terminal program and I've got um, an external supply for the 5 volt rail it takes quite a bit of current on the 5 volt rail it's about 8 amps and uh, so I've got it uh, hooked up to my uh, Ryden um, 6012 and that is obviously a 12 amp uh, supply so it should be able to supply this fairly comfortably. Um, it also needs mains so I can use the internal um, plus minus 12 volt supplies so I've got it hooked up to the uh, auto transformer for that. As I say the sequencing of the boot up of the supplies will be incorrect um, but I can still set the program counter manually. Um, before we boot it up I just wanted to show you the uh, processor. As I say it's halfway house between the full uh, discrete architecture and the single chip designs. Um, this board, second board down on the right, is the processor board but rather than pulling that out I'm going to pull this top board out. Yeah, it's just easy to get out. So we'll just pop this one out of the way. Okay, so I'll move the camera so you can have a closer look at the processor board. Okay, so these five chips here make up the processor. In fact, four of them are the processor, and one is to extend the instruction set. So it will run with just the first four. It's just that certain instructions uh, won't um, be available. Um, but all the 
uh, architecture that was built into the PDP-8 in terms of the processor boards uh, is now uh, residing in these four devices. And um, there's a bit of glue logic around it, as you can see, uh, but uh, it's quite interesting. This was, of course, later um, compressed even further into uh, single devices, such as the um, 6502, uh, Z80, that sort of thing. But the, the general idea um, is that the processor technology was being turned into or resolved into single chip um, design and it sounds fairly logical now to do that but uh, it would have been extremely difficult right from the beginning of uh, computer design uh, simply because there was no target to aim for computer technology developed and um, was directed by um, the uses it was put to so trying to design an integrated system early on would have been very difficult um, without a, a definite target it's almost impossible to design something like this but by the time this machine came along in the mid 70s uh, computers had pretty much started to uh, resolve into a specific technology and the direction that they were going was uh, becoming very clear and so the designers could develop this and then later this was uh, changed into a single processor. Um, the overall architecture of this machine is um, general PDP design. It's got a shared address and data bus, that sort of thing. And um, I won't go into too much of that now. We'll probably have to go into that as we start trying to figure out why it's not working properly. Um, but I'll pop this top board back in and uh, we'll try booting it up and seeing what happens. Okay, I'll just move the camera back. Okay, we'll get the machine powered up. Make sure it comes uh, to life properly. We should be seeing slightly under eight amps on the ride and supply. And uh, as I say, the mains going into it is just to provide the plus or minus 12 volts that it needs uh, for certain circuits such as the RS232. So what I'll do before I turn the power on is I'll bring the terminal program up in the corner of the screen. Okay, so as you can see, we're drawing slightly under 8 amps and um, we have indeed got the um, boot up prompt. So what I'll do now is enter a quick test program. I'll enter a, a quick um, program into RAM. This is the test program from the uh, user manual. And what it will do is it will print out the character set on the console. Okay, so that's the program entered. I'll now try to run it and uh, see what happens. So the program runs fine, it's printing out the character set to the um, terminal and uh, what I'll do now is try and uh, boot up the uh, actual system code that's in the ROMs and all we have to do here is um, change the um, program counter to point to the first instruction in the, uh, the ROM memory space which is at um, I believe uh, 100,000 octal and so we'll try that now and see what happens. Okay, so the program starts up fine. Um, we don't know where the fault is in this, whether it's hardware or there's an issue with the firmware. Uh, I don't know what the current status is, so I'm currently discussing this with the owner and um, this will hopefully be an interesting series of videos in trying to uh, get this system to work. From what I can gather, it's not reading the encoders properly. Um, I don't have the encoders, I don't know what type it uses yet, so I'm discussing that with the owner. Um, so I might have to uh, mock up some type of uh, encoder system to 
uh, get it to uh, to behave itself. It might just be there's an unrelated hardware fault that's stopping it getting as far as the uh, encoder reading. But as I say, it should make quite an interesting series of videos to work our way through and try and figure out exactly why the machine's not working the way it should. Uh, comments welcome. If you have experience in setting these up in a CNC environment, then please leave a comment.